Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you listening right now. Thank you. Imagine me not creepily hugging your ears and thanks. Chris Zaragoza, Jim Hart, Logan Larson, and A.B. Puppy. Yay! On this episode thanks, of everyone. DTNS, Samsung unpacked its latest Galaxy and is the first of the big folks to enter the smart ring arena. Should Ura be afraid? Also, an entire PC that fits in a foldable keyboard. More foldables. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, July 10th, 2024. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. In Columbus, Ohio, I'm Rob Dunwood. I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. And joining us, Android developer and host of Android Faithful, Wen Tui Da. Welcome back. Hey, DTNS fam. Good to be hey. back. Good, Good to, to have, have you back. Great to have you. Happy Unpack today Happy unpack. to you and all <laughs> who celebrate. <laughs> uh, we're going to spend most of the show talking about what Samsung unpacked, but let's start with the quick hits. Microsoft is raising Xbox Game Pass Ultimate pricing starting in September with a new standard subscription that doesn't include day one access to first party Xbox games. The company has started emailing Xbox Game Ultimate subscribers in the U.S. that on September 12th, the price is going to go up to $20 a month. That's $3 above the current month pricing. PC Game Pass subscribers go from a $9.99, so $10 per month, to $12 per month plan and maintain access to day one titles. Speaking of Microsoft, it gave up its non-voting observer role on OpenAI's board, and Apple will no longer get a similar role. Uh, Phil Schiller was supposed to be the person taking that role, but no, both companies will not have non-voting observers hanging around the boardroom, but OpenAI says they will be invited to more board meetings just to keep them up to date. Microsoft is responding to EU antitrust scrutiny of its investment in OpenAI. Speaking of which, Microsoft just headed off another antitrust investigation, reaching an agreement with cloud infrastructure service providers in Europe, or CISPI, to withdraw its 2022 complaint to the European Commission. In exchange for withdrawing that complaint, Microsoft will offer all the members of CISPI uh, Microsoft applications and services on their local cloud infrastructures. Amazon is among them, by the way. 1.8 million people served by Centerpoint Energy in Houston, Texas, lost power after Hurricane Barrel hit land this week. The company doesn't offer a power outage app, but resourceful folks use the What a Burger app as a proxy. Yes, What a Burger, the Texas burger chain with 127 Houston area stores. It does have an app that shows whether its restaurant is open or closed on a map, and that's live. So during normal business hours, people started looking at the Whataburger map to get an idea of which areas were with or without power. Short for remote authentication dial-in user service, that's how old it is. Radius is an old and widely used network protocol, and it is commonly found on buy switches, routers, access points, VPN concentrators. Uh, anything shipped in the past two decades used in a network, that includes VPN access, DSL, home fiber, 2G, 3G, uh, all of that equipment, all that telecom equipment probably uses Radius. It's a telecom enterprise network thing. So why am I bothering you about it? Researchers have discovered a way to use an MD5 collision attack to compromise the protocol. That means something to you if it means something. Otherwise, they figured out how to compromise the protocol. Uh, the attacker would have to already have partial access to the network. So the, this is a breach that can be used if there's another man-in-the-middle attack happening. This is not a vulnerability that consumers can do anything about, though. Uh, it's a sophisticated attack, which is not likely to happen a lot. But now that we know what it is, they can get on to fixing it. If you work in enterprise IT or run a network, you probably already know about it. But uh, you should upgrade to Radius over TLS, switch to multi-hop Radius deployments, and isolate Radius traffic from internet access if you haven't already. Uh, the IETF has more guidance and best practices. So hurry on over there and check it out. Germany has become one of the last Western nations to require its mobile phone carriers to phase out the use of both Huawei and ZTE networking equipment from their 5G networks. Reuters sources say the agreement, which is still in principle, would take place over the next five years, with operators initially replacing the core network of 5G data centers in 2026. 
in the second phase, replacing Chinese uh, maker's parts for antennas, transmission lines, and towers by 2029. Welcome to the party, Germany. I mean, willkommen to the party in German, Germany. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, let's talk foldables, but not the Samsung ones quite yet. Tom's Hardware highlighted a demonstration from a Chinese company called Linglong of a foldable keyboard that is also a PC. The whole PC is inside the keyboard. Uh, and their idea is you connect it to AR glasses. Presumably, they're probably going to tell you some AR glasses, but you could connect it to any kind of AR glasses. It has two USB-C ports and one USB-A port. You could also hook it up to a regular old monitor. It has an AMD Ryzen 7 8840U processor. Uh, you can have it configured in 16 or 32 gigs of RAM. It, you get a terabyte of storage in there, so you can keep lots of data on it. It's Wi-Fi 6. Uh, it's got Bluetooth. It's got a huge battery, 16,000 milliamp hour battery. Linglong plans to sell the keyboard for somewhere between the equivalent of $412 and $495, depending on the specs. Uh, but they aren't making it available to everyone yet. They haven't said when it's coming. Uh, they just said they will accept 200 beta testers to send it to first. So part of me wonders if it's going to end up being vaporware. Uh, but it seems perfectly plausible to be able to do this. Uh, who's who's in who's in first for a, a computer that's in a keyboard you can just fold up and take with you? I mean, I, I uh, sent this to a friend this morning, and his first reaction was like, wait, there's a fan inside of this <laughs> keyboard? And I was like, well, yeah, it's a, it's a PC. <laughs> they kind of need to keyboard. do that. And he was like, yeah. that's crazy. And I was like, crazy enough to work, though. I love this. I love this idea. I like that it's so small and so compact that they're able to do it. I don't know how practical it is because you could just as easily take a really, really small computer with you that, that has a screen and a keyboard and speakers and a mouse and all that, and they call them laptops. They've been making yeah. these for yeah. 30 right. years. Right. So... Um, you know, I, I don't know how practical this is to where I want. There's just a random screen. I want to take my keyboard and plug into it, or I guess you said there's there's AR glasses that you could. Potentially but this use one folds. This. Oh, I guess laptops fold up too. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> this one folds well, up really, really, this, really small. This would yeah. fold into something smaller than a laptop. That's true. That's true. And yeah. I guess if you are comfortable using glasses as a, a monitor, which you don't have to go Apple Vision Pro or Quest or anything to do that, you can you can get some glasses that just look like glasses that do it. Um, then yeah, you could do the X reel plugged into this, yeah. and that would be a little slimmer to carry around, I guess. Yeah, I guess it depends on what you want. I mean, like as someone who carries around two laptops all the time, I wouldn't necessarily mind having a personal computer that folds down this small. And yeah, with the advent of like uh, AR glasses and and even like I think you can use an Android tablet if you have like a third party software. You can use your Android tablet as a display. So I kind of get it. Like actually, I think ThinkPad was it Lenovo had a ThinkPad that was both. So actually, yeah. So ThinkPad, think, or so the Lenovo ThinkPad, I think hybrid something, had a similar idea. Except the keyboard wasn't as sex, wasn't as sexy. It was like the bottom half of a laptop. Yeah, like right. The whole bottom. That's basically half. what this is. this is. They just but, designed but, it better. Yeah. yeah. But this is way better designed. So I actually like that for people that want, for example, in that case, an Android tablet with a PC. This is actually a little bit sexier and a lot more space saving uh, than the Lenovo. So yeah, into it. it. It's it's certainly not the first thing ever to try this. I, I've seen similar things, but like you said, uh, this this one is nicely done. I don't know anything about this company. I don't know if they're reliable. I don't know if they'll ever really come to market outside of China. Uh, but yeah. the prototype certainly looks good. I, I will, I'll give them that, and I like it the does idea. Look nice. Yeah, it does it does? Well, and nice. to your point, Rob, you know, being like, uh, don't laptops just afford you all of the stuff all in one anyway? I mean, yeah, of course, of course. If for some reason there's some reason that I don't know the you know having you know an external keyboard, but it you know is also the computer works well for travel or moving around or just whatever office setup you might have. Uh, I, I don't know. I like innovation like this. Yeah. And, and it's got and a Ryzen 7 in it, too. This is, you know, it's, yeah, it's like a it's good like, it's, it's, it's a legit there. PC. It's a legit computer. I mean, this is something that you could really do work on. And, and that's cool. But I just like I just the, the practicability of it, it, you know, practicality of it, I mm -hmm. guess is, I'm, I'm still struggling with that because laptops are so easy to also carry around. And even if it was, 
I'm going to have a second PC. Well, if I've got my laptop, I could just use the keyboard on that to interface with the PC. So I, I just see so many reasons that you could work around actually having to carry a a keyboard that is actually a computer. You know what this reminds me of? I, I think the name was Royal uh, at CES several years back was one of the first to show off foldable tablets. And then everyone, including myself, has forgotten them because the foldable screens, they, they sold their screens to other companies, I'm sure. But yeah. uh, but they, they were the first to demonstrate it. That, that feels like what this is, is they're, they're demonstrating it. They're probably going to sell some of their IP and maybe some of their manufacturing capabilities to somebody else. But I wouldn't be surprised if this, if those glasses take off, glasses as monitors take off, if this this turns into a common product from lots of different people. Uh, folks, if you're like Tom, that's ridiculous. Also, why are you wearing that hat? Uh, or anything else you want to say about the show, please send us an email. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com, and I will answer you. Actually, the reason I'm wearing the hat is uh, it's a Samsung Lions hat. The it's Samsung... not a Sarah Lane hat. I know you always <laughs> you always uh, want it to be. Whenever I wear this hat, I know I'm so sorry. It's uh, it just, is to I you a Sarah one day Lane it hat. Will be. It, yeah, yeah, but to I everyone mean, else, I have the beholder. Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a Samsung Lions hat. Samsung held. What I would say was a somewhat predictable Galaxy unpack today. Most of the items announced were leaked ahead of time or even officially teased like the ring. Uh, most of them were spec upgrades. Uh, Samsung pushed its integration of Gemini as Galaxy AI uh, showed a comparable set of features to what you're going to get from Google on the Pixel and eventually Apple on Apple Intelligence. Not exactly the same features. Everybody's going to have a little different spin, but comparable. Uh, all of the things we're going to talk about are available to order shipping July 24th, but even if it was expected, even if they had teased it already, Samsung did become the first of the big tech companies to launch a smart ring. So let's start there. Uh, watch out, Ura. The Samsung Galaxy Ring includes an optical heart rate, skin temperature sensors, a titanium frame. They claim you can get seven days of battery life on it, so you plug it in once a week. Works with Android 11 and above Samsung Galaxy phones. So you have to have a Galaxy. But it can do sleep tracking based on your movement, heart, and respiratory rate. It can track menstrual cycles based on your skin temp while you're sleeping. And it automatically detects walking and running to do some exercise detection. And the big thing Samsung wanted to tout was you don't have to pay for it. There's no subscription fee for those tracking services. Uh, it also can double pinch to take photos or dismiss alarms on your connected Galaxy phone, which is kind of nifty. There are nine sizes, three colors. It's $399 when do you like it and would you put that ring on it <laughs> i like it i actually did have an aura ring for some time so there's a lot of things that i do like about it um i like that i like the charger for for number one i think samsung has done a pretty good job with all of their you know obviously wireless charging devices i think the samsung like the number one thing for me was that the aura charger which is like this little teeny little pedestal uh that is kind of just free floating and you plug it into whatever usb i think the case just sells it like it makes it a really portable device and a lot easier mm. to charge um i do like that samsung health is free so I am a Whoop user, so I pay a monthly subscription. I know like Fitbit has a monthly subscription, but I think it was really smart to make um, Samsung Health like free of subscription. As one of my friends who is also a big like health wearable net said, I don't want to have to subscribe to my own data. So I think that was really brilliant. Uh, and I do think the ring is a form factor that as much as Aura's had success is something that is great for, you know, you know, I guess, how can I casual like non-fitness gym rat person mm -hmm. i think it's a great mm -hmm. form factor for people to wear especially if it is comfortable uh 24 7. i am not really a ring user personally because the kind of sports that i do i have tried to do workout with a ring and it hurts a lot when you're like lifting heavy things and that oh, okay. ring is on there so i couldn't really wear it 24 7 but i will probably get one to try it but, but i do think it's like I think it works. I think I think they're going to be very competitive with Aura. Uh, we'll see how all the lawsuits they have, pre the preemptive lawsuits they have with Aura <laughs> work out. But I think that there's a lot that's really good about the package of the ring, and I'll give them a lot of props for that. So I'll probably get I, one. I think it was uh, I think it was Victoria Song over at The Verge who mentioned she liked she liked the Samsung ring. She gravitated towards gold, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Um, but, you know, again, it comes in silver or black as well. But said, um, even though, you know, in a, kind of a, a short hands-on uh, viewing of this, she 
uh, of the nine different sizes was able to find the size that made the most sense. She was like, you know, anybody who, uh, you know, to your point, when um, exercising, heat, weather, I mean, sometimes fingers expand. Yes. And, you know, it, it's, it's, even if it's like a perfect fit at one point during the day, it might not be a perfect fit at another time during the day. And that's always been my issue with wearing a ring. I like the idea of wearing a ring. I mean, as long as it can fit my little baby hands, great. But with the with a watch, you know, sometimes sometimes I'm four four uh, uh, dots in, sometimes mm-hmm. three, sometimes mm-hmm. two. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, while I'm sleeping, type thing. And so I think that that's a big part of this whole thing. It's it's like if it works perfectly and is also comfortable all the time, then you're golden. That is really fair. Also, um, just as a side effect of the fact that smaller rings for smaller fingers will have smaller batteries, you could be a little bit at disadvantage at battery life. I don't. Oh. I, I guess we we don't know like long term whether that actually is going to be a practical like hindrance to using a ring. But that is something to take into account. Is that if you're someone with smaller fingers, I don't know if I have smaller fingers, but if you are a smaller finger fam, you'll have less battery life. So that's, I, I'm kind of be curious to see like what the wider you know like or long term use of this is going to be. So I don't know. I suspect Rob but, will have longer battery life. <laughs> I, yeah, I just had one question, just, just one question, because as I'm watching the videos and watching people and, and all the things with the ring, everyone's wearing it on their index finger. Is that is that like a thing? Is that is that how it has to be worn or? Oh, gosh, I would never wear a ring on yeah. my index finger. But yeah, every or, video. Or maybe I every would if it was a seen. smart ring. So like that, that that's idea. that's just a that's question, a question for me. My sister does, but because she has tiny fingers and that probably like the aura I mean, that she got could only fit on her index finger. Yeah, I guess people don't want to re- wear it on the ring finger. Yeah. Because that's reserved <laughs> for for other uses. Uh but yeah, why the index finger? Why not? Well, I guess the middle finger you don't want to show people the ring. <laughs> then you got the thumb and the pinky. I think that's it. It's just yeah. the only so, finger left. Oh, I know pl- I know plenty of uh, particularly men who wear it on their uh wedding ring finger. Oh, and yeah. I'm sort of like, oh, that's a fun gray thing that you guys decided to do. And they're like, oh, oh yeah. it's so that's what I would do. I, I wear my wedding band on my left hand. I would just yeah, wear sure. this on the on the ring, you know, on the ring yeah. finger on my right hand. I, then you're I, married I in Europe. That that's what probably many people would do. But it's like in the videos, everybody had it on their index fingers. So yeah. I was like, oh, that's, that's a great thing. question. Yeah. No, that, 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 I didn't even notice that. Now that you said it, I, I'm thinking back. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. Um, that is interesting. Feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com if you actually know the reason uh, why. Uh, There were, of course, phones, the Samsung Galaxy Fold 6 and the Samsung Galaxy Flip 6. Uh, Fold 6 has a 6.3-inch screen, slightly wider. So if the kind of tall, thin aspect of the Fold threw you off, it's it's getting better. It's it's still not as wide as the other foldables, but it's a little less narrow. Uh, Unfolds into a 7.6-inch AMOLED screen, which is also slightly wider and therefore a little more square. Uh, Both those screens have 120 hertz refresh rates. It's also slightly thinner, about 6% lighter than the Fold 5. Camera and battery are the same. Roughly speaking, it gets most of the S24 generative features. Android 14, One UI 6.1, and seven years of updates. It's $100 more, though, starting at $1,899. Then the Flip, which is the more clamshell one, uh, unfolds into a 6.7-inch AMOLED screen. And the big sell there is that you'll be able to bring more widgets to the cover screen. Granted, you can kind of do that yourself with a little hackery. Uh, my wife has done that, but but you can do it natively in One UI now. They're going to have uh, message notification reply, real-time weather and time updates, wallpaper stuff. Primary camera sensor got upgraded from 12 megabytes or megapixels to 50 megapixels. Uh, battery is 8% larger than the Flip 5. It's thinner but not lighter, and it also gets Android 14, One UI 6.1, and seven years of updates, and it's also $100 more at $1,099. Not much to say about these. These are very incremental upgrades. Uh, when? what do you think? I'm really disappointed by the price increase, um, and it's only a little bit wider. So that was my my big thing. I really did love generally the... I like I like the Z Folds a lot. I, I had a Z Fold 3, 4, and 5. I probably won't pre-order the Z Fold 6 because it's just not different enough. And it's $100 more expensive. It's a little bit wider. And I think the funny thing was, like, I could not find any marketing materials that actually showed the cover screen just, like, in and of itself. I had I think I had to go to, like, an, an enthusiast site to see it. It's not that much different. And 
And it's so disappointing because so many other foldables have much wider front screens that make them so much more usable, um, whether that's like the Pixel Fold, which is what I have up to the OnePlus Open. I'm really disappointed that they that Samsung didn't take the hint and just go for that more usable cover screen. It's a little bit wider, but like, what is it, like a millimeter wider? Like, I, I just feel like there's not enough change for a hundred bucks more. It's I'm, I'm a little disappointed. And this is like the first time I'm, I'm in a bit that I'm not going to pre-order it. So... The same thing with the flip too. It's like it's barely different. It's barely yeah. different. If you didn't own a I flip already, I mean the camera already, upgrade is good. It's fine. But yeah, obviously, yeah, it's a big uh, camera upgrade. It is, but yeah, but yeah. It, I, could, yeah. I could potentially see myself checking it out because it is a little bit wider. The last fold that I had was the three, mm -hmm. and it was just too narrow. And I also mm -hmm. found myself using it when it was closed most of the time. So the narrowness of the phone and it, using it probably more than seventy percent of the time when it was closed. It just didn't work for me. So if this is a little wider and it just feels comfortable when it's in candy bar mode, I could potentially switch over to it, but I have to go play with it in the store somewhere first. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the thing, Rob. It's one aspect ratio wider. It's 2219 instead of 2319. If that Mostly. helps, I think there are yeah. better options for it, but I mean, like everybody else is kind of holding on to that eighteen hundred price point or below. Yeah, and I just think I just think there are equally as wonderful, slightly thinner, now you can cheaper. Get a razor, you can get two razor pluses for the price of one fold. Now, granted, that's clamshell to book book fold, but still, that's these are expensive. I just wonder what yeah. the hundred dollars is for. And I, at first, I was like, is it they're making us pay a hundred dollars for the AI? But there's mm. a rumor that you're going to end up paying for Galaxy AI as a subscription anyway. And so if that's true, then WTF, hundred dollars extra for both models. Yeah. Models. What what part got more expensive in there? I'm unclear. Um, maybe it's because they need to pay their striking workers more. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, Galaxy AI is also a feature on these phones. Samsung is building its own generative assistant apps. So they mentioned Samsung Notes and Samsung Keyboard are coming and more on the way. Uh, Google's Gemini app is now optimized for foldable screens. So it can use overlay and sp split screen on the Samsung Galaxy Folds. Circle to search on the fold and flip will support solutions for symbolic math equations and scanning barcodes and QR codes. Uh, Google said that will come to more devices later, but it's launching here. Samsung also demonstrated something's called sketch to image. So you can use the S Pen on the fold, draw a sketch of a boat, and then the model will turn it into a real looking boat that is on the Seine because they're in Paris. Samsung can also now show automatic translations on the outer display, which the Google Pixel could also do. So it's playing a little catch up there. I wasn't blown away by any of these. They're nice. They're not bad, but none of them made me go, ooh, maybe I need to switch. I'm sticking with Samsung. I've, I've been rocking a Samsung since I've been rocking a Samsung. I think um, I'm probably on my 10th, maybe 11th phone at this point. So I am in the ecosystem. So if there's a new phone to get and I, I want one that folds, this would be one that I, that, that I would get. I, I kind of am interested in the AI stuff simply because everything is AI. But I wonder if if Samsung and other phone manufacturers, iPhone, you know, basically anyone who's making a phone, if they're going to run into the issue to where there's just not a lot of applications beside the ones that you create for yourself or the ones mm. that Google creates for you, which is still kind of limited. So it, it's cool that it has all this AI stuff in it, but what can it really do? It's we've kind of been seeing this for the last, you know, six months, 12 months, as far as what AI on a phone looks like. 100% Rob. Actually, I have a friend who is like tech lead for a big kind of fang level company. And he's actually the lead of AI integration. And even he has to say in regards to all of like the hype that we've been seeing around AI and particularly generative AI on phones, that it's a solution looking for a problem. And again, like I'm cynical mm -hmm. as, as, as anything. And I have been like complaining about the generative AI generation for a while. And this is someone, by the way, who is actually integrating AI. And it just feels like that. And it feels like table stakes, but in a kind of shallow way. It's like, hey, it's the buzzword. It's the zeitgeist. We have to yeah. have it. And not and, and the technologist, I think, yeah, that's pretty dang cool. The like kind of like the multimodal, the the way that it can kind of like again, like the the sketch to image, I think, which is like the example Tom Tom talked about. It is amazing tech. It's really cool. How many people are really going to need this day to day? And it and it's like it's a cool thing. I think I I think I complained about this last night on Android Faithful that it's starting to feel like a parlor trick to sell the phone, and that's that's a little bit mean because I think there is like value and obviously creatives might have like a lot of use for this, but eh, it's, yeah. it's, mm. it's 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 part of that was it the Gartner hype cycle? It just feels like part of the Gartner mm. hype cycle. Yeah, yeah, I think so. We're we're catching up at the top of that curve. That makes yep. sense. I. uh 
I was also like, I can't draw a boat as well as she drew in the demo. <laughs> like, yeah. is my boat going to turn into a boat? Because I can't draw very well. Um, all right, let's talk about the watch. Just get better at drying boats, Tom. <laughs> yeah, Tom. <laughs> That's a you problem, Suck Tom. it up. <laughs> uh, watch 7 will be available in two sizes, 40 millimeters, 44 millimeters. Uh, can detect sleep apnea and AFib now, electrocardiogram, blood pressure monitoring. But the big surprise, quote unquote surprise, was watch Ultra, a 47 millimeter watch, squarish circle design. Samsung calls it a cushion titanium frame. 10 atmospheres of pressure resistance. So they said it could go 500 meters below sea level or up to 9,000 meters above sea level. 100 hours in power saving mode or 48 hours in exercise power saving, which lets you get the exercise tracking but still save power. Uh, new programmable quick button placed between the top and bottom buttons. Also has a siren, which is kind of a you know outdoorsy thing that a lot of people like to have in their gadgets. Uh, it runs Wear OS 5, comes with or without data service. Starts at $300 for the Watch 7, $650 for the Watch Ultra. When I know you were kind of excited about this one. I, I think it's really interesting. So, like, the biggest thing that we first saw when, of course, as you mentioned, everything got leaked, like, way out of time. We've been, like, talking about specs for weeks, is the form factor. So, it's a chunky watch. And when I first saw it, I thought, oh, it looks like a Galaxy Watch tried to put on an Apple Watch jacket. Kind of like it was, like, Chris Farley in that one sketch. Um, and it does, it, it's really interesting because also pre, um, kind of previously Galaxy watches didn't have like crowns. They had maybe a rotating bezel like the classic. Mm. So it's a dramatic shift in the design language. So I, I think it's really interesting because at first I was like, well, it looks like they're trying to compete with the Apple Watch Ultra, which is, how much is it? Like six, is, is the Ultra, like Apple Ultra, is that 600-ish? Is it a little more cheaper? A little more, oh, a little more cheaper? No, it's, 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 it's above 800. 800. 800. Okay. So it, yeah. at first when I looked at it, I thought it's competing directly with the Apple Watch, which makes a lot of sense if you look at some of the other things we're going to talk about. But it actually hit me today that the, the, they're actually trying to compete with people like Garmin. So Samsung is really trying to take over the health space from the casual with the ring and the kind of regular Galaxy Watch 7 all the way up to this. And this, looking today at the at the kind of announcements, they talked about like better GPS. They talked about like um, FTP tracking, which is like mm -hmm. a biker, th you know, a cyclist metric. I forgot what it stands for, but my husband's a cyclist and he was really interested. And it really felt like this is more competing at a Garmin ultra level, right? Like it is competing against Apple, but it really is trying to be like a premier fitness, you know, watch. And it was really funny because actually I just tried a Garmin like a few weeks, uh, a few months ago. It's kind of stunning to see like that comparison because like I think Garmin is like the premier, you know, uh, wearable for a lot of different sports, cycling included. But so so that's what I think it is. I think it's really interesting. And I think they're trying to play in a lot of different markets. They're trying to like glomp a little bit of Apple, glomp a little bit of what mm -hmm. Garmin's doing and be like, hey, come to us for all of your fitness needs. Whether that's actually going to pan out, I'm actually pretty skeptical. But yeah, it's 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 definitely a a a different design language and i think i don't know rob as a longtime samsung user does that i don't know how do you feel about the kind of so, shift so i've been using a samsung watch this is the original samsung watch Ooh. and i've never upgraded it just yeah. because i've bought probably four or five bracelets for it and i just like it and it does what it does this this actually made me lean and say oh that looks different than the one that i own um, because I'm not really into all of the fitness stuff and everything. I mean, it's it's all cool and everything, but I just like to wear a watch so I can tell time. That is that is this, the functionality of it for me. But this made me lean in. I'm like, can I wrap my house or wrap my house? Can I wrap my mind around six hundred and fifty dollars? <laughs> can you mortgage house your house, house around six hundred and fifty dollars? Yeah. <laughs> can I wrap my mind around that? So th yeah. that's kind of where I'm at because I like how it looks, and I am a a big chunky watch wearer. This is arguably one of the smallest watches that I regularly wear. So I could see myself getting it. As I said, I just it's it's, it's not inexpensive. So we'll have to just. You know, I, 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 what had happened was is that I was just in the store, <laughs> and I don't know how I got in the bag, but it just, it just did. It's, it's probably going to be one of those type of situations. My credit card must have fallen into the machine. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I mean, so many of the – well, not so many. A, a couple of the reviews also said, ooh, yeah, Samsung Watch. I mean, the Galaxy Watch now just looks like the, you know, Apple Watch. And, I mean, it doesn't. It does and it doesn't. Obviously, there are some things that have uh, been taken from, you know, what works well for the Apple Watch. And that's going to, you know, obviously also be successful for, for the Galaxy Watch. 
48 hours in exercise power saving, I will say, you do not get that with my Apple Watch Series 7. No, sir. You got to charge this thing every day um, and, and kind of keep on it. You're not getting 48 hours uh, because I use it, you know, every time I go, even to take my dog out for a walk. You know, it's that's an outdoor walk. We're recording that, you know, that's taking battery power. So so I, th- I think, you know, having a couple days versus, you know, less than one day, that counts for a lot. I will speak up again for the Garmin people because I talked to a couple of them this morning. And I think my one, my one of my good friends who is a cyclist and regularly cycles did say that for him, unless it does four days, which is his like practical experience. And I think that's what 100 hours works out to, then it's a no go. Um, I also wanted to poke fun again at the sorry, functional threshold functional threshold yes, power. Thank, thank you, you Xander. Xander for thank that, you, Xander. Yeah. Um, so, so what's interesting is, like, and actually, I was listening to Samsung Galaxy packed on my phone, and my husband actually took my phone out of my hand. He was like, what do you mean? What do you mean they do FTP in a watch? So the functional threshold power, you actually need pedals and like kind of trackers, sensors on the bike to measure that, hmm. uh, which I thought was really interesting. And they did mention that in Unpacked. But, but again, Garmin and companies like Garmin sell the, pe- the pedals and the watches and have an integrated system. So I just think that's really interesting to note, by the way, that, again, they're really trying to like be all the things for everybody, but they already have like the internal entropy of a bunch of people using, you know, whatever their current fitness ecosystem of choice is. And I just, I really wonder how that's going to pan out. And I think that, I thought that was really funny because for me as a non-cyclist, when that went by, I was like, oh, that's really cool. I think that's really awesome. And then my husband's like, no, how do they do this? Yeah, this doesn't make sense. And I, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah, speaking out for all the, I guess, Garmin slash cyclists out there. Yeah, I, I just think that was really funny. So Well, before we uh, wrap up the Samsung segment, uh, we would be remiss if we did not acknowledge the Galaxy Buds now look like Apple uh, AirPod Pros. $180 for the Galaxy Buds 3. Those will get you five hours of battery and 24 hours with the case. $250 for the Buds 3 Pro. Those are the ones that use silicon tips and have adaptive noise cancellation or, or noise control. You have active on the Buds 3. You have adaptive on the Buds 3 Pro. They also have voice detect and a blade light, a little like light strip that indicates Bluetooth pairing status. They do not do multipoint. They can automatically switch between Galaxy devices, but not multipoint. Uh, and again, the buds and everything else we've talked about are available to order now from Samsung, shipping July 24th. Uh, are these buds for you or anyone? Last last chance to talk about the Galaxy buds. I mean, not for me, just because I have AirPods, but if I didn't, if I was in the market... Sure, I guess. I love my Galaxy Buds 2 Pro or Pro 2, however you pronounce that. I love them. So if these are upgrades, I'll try them out. If they, as long as they fit in my ears. I've got a big head and big ears. Yeah, so as long I as got they the fit, silicone tip. The, uh, you know, as long as they fit, <laughs> I'm game. I got some big ears, okay, people? <laughs> I, need, I need a really good earbud. <laughs> I might have big ears, too. I don't know. I think I have big ears, um, too. <laughs> as, as Tom mentioned earlier, uh, Samsung's labor union uh, has extended its three-day strike to be indefinite. So the union wants an extra day of leave, a 3.5% wage increase, and changes to the bonus pay system. Samsung says none of this will affect production. The union says, oh, it will. <laughs> we'll find out who's right soon, or maybe and- they'll... Take that $100 extra per fold and give it to the union. We'll find out. All right, let's check out the mailbag really quick. All right, if you need a hotel room for a few hours, sometimes you're, I don't know, on a layover and you just want to do something and don't feel like being in the airport the entire time, your next extended layover may be better because Chris Christensen has a good resource for you. This is Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler with another Tech in Travel Minute. I have an app for you that I haven't used, but it would be an interesting app for a certain situation. That's dayuse.com. Dayuse.com can get you into hotel room for a few hours for up to 75% less than the typical rate of the overnight rate, rather, for the hotel would be. And this app features 5,000 hotels in 23 countries. So if you have one of those long connections, one of those long layovers, Maybe instead of laying down and falling asleep in the Madrid airport like I did recently, you could get a local hotel room, get a little bit of a nap, and then come back to the airport. The app again is dayuse.com, and this is Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler. 
I can't remember the last time uh, I was in a situation like that, but I certainly have been in several of them, you know, where, I don't know, you land early and you can't check in until Just later, need a couple hours. Or, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. just, I just need to get, take a shower, take a nap, you know, yeah. maybe have a little snack. So good stuff. Good stuff from Chris Christensen, as always. Also good stuff from you, Juan Tui Dao. Let folks know where they can keep up with all that you do. Oh, wow. Uh, you can find me here, actually, wherever you're watching this, if you're watching this live uh, on uh, twitch.tv slash goodayinternet or youtube.com slash uh, daily tech news show every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern for Android Yay. Faithful. And Yay. or just Happy go to Android Faithful. Thank too. you. Has Thank it you really so been a year? It's been a year, yeah. Wow, that's Happy awesome. Anniversary. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Thank Good Thank stuff you. from all of you. No, fantastic show. Do not miss it. Uh, also, don't miss Daily Tech Headlines. Uh, you get Sarah and or Rob every day of the week telling you the headlines in five minutes or less. Uh, Rob is also here all the time on Thursdays on Daily Tech News Show. But what else you got going on? So today actually is the launch of season two of Beyond the Post, a podcast I do with Bodie Grimm. And, you know, we did an interview with Lamar Wilson. And it's I'm telling you, folks, it's awesome. It's so good that we had to break it up into two parts. So today you can actually get the first half of our interview with Lamar Wilson. That That is a layered dude. He, he, he knows a lot about what he does and how he does it. Be interested to go check it out. Patrons, stick around for the extended show. If you've been enjoying the Samsung discussion and you want us to dive a little deeper, maybe a little wider, you know, like the new Fold cover screen, uh, stick around for Good Day Internet. We're going to be talking more about where these announcements fit in the wider world of phones and watches and all of that. So become a patron if you're not already. Patreon.com slash DTNS. Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern. That is 2000 UTC. You can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Thanks to everybody who joins us live, although we're always on demand as well. We'll be back tomorrow talking about CNN's new digital strategy with Justin Robert Young. He has thoughts. Talk to you then. The DTNS family of podcasts. Helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>